with us right now, Paul Moore. Paul, you are the managing partner, co-founder of wellingscapital.com, Wellings Capital found on the web at wellingscapital.com. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here, Josh. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so at a high level, please give us the give us the overview of, of, of who Wellings Capital is and, and what you do. Yeah, so I sold my company to a publicly traded firm in the late 90s. I started investing in real estate, flipped houses, flipped waterfront lots, did an online marketing thing. I built some houses, which was a huge mistake for somebody who <laughs> doesn't even know how to tighten their own doorknob. But anyway, I was trying to figure out how to get into commercial real estate, and I really didn't know how to get in. And when I discovered syndication after building yeah. some multifamily projects, I fell in love with that. I learned everything I could. I wrote a book on apartment syndication, and then we developed, uh, we've got three or four funds. We're getting ready to launch our fourth fund at Wellings Capital that allow for regular investors to get involved in large scale, diversified commercial real estate projects. Yeah. So uh, you've kind of started, you've opened the door on this. So go ahead and tell us what are the advantages of commercial over residential? Man, you know, I, I, there's probably a lot of things I could say. I'll tell you a couple quick stories. I met with a residential investor the other day. He had 43 units and he was excited. He was a medical professional. He wanted to fund his retirement that way. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was just telling me, yeah, he said, three days ago, I leased a new apartment to somebody and it took them a whole day and a half to set it on fire and almost burn it down. And it just reminded me, you know, like dealing with toilets, tenants, and trash. I mean, sure, there's tenants ultimately in every business, but there's a different type of tenant in the commercial space. I mean, I'm thinking self-storage now, you know, you don't have any evictions, you don't have any toilets, you don't have to deal with all the hassles that you do with multifamily, Mo mobile home parks. You know, that's another thing I love. Partnering with our tenants is what we do with mobile home parks because we lease land to them and they bring their own home or they buy a home. And actually, you know, people might, you know, think badly like I did for years of trailer parks, but it's not true. The reason Blackstone and Sam Zell and so many big players have gotten into the space is it's very, very profitable. It's the only uh, asset type that I know of that has a shrinking supply and an increasing <laughs> demand every year. So commercial real estate is the playground of the rich and famous and people who want to pass their wealth on to the next generation. Their tax advantages are amazing. The opportunity to avoid taxes and then ultimately not even pay capital gains at the end of the line is there. Uh, there's just so many benefits to commercial real estate. And I, I don't ever plan to go back to residential now that I've been doing this for a decade. Yeah. And, and I think you, again, you kind of briefly mentioned this, but when we talk about commercial, what are some examples of great commercial properties? I saw like kind of looking at some of your content, um, you know, yeah. storage. Um, I, I saw was one. Um, what, what are some other favorites that you love right now? Well, I'm going to answer that a little different way, Josh. And I don't know if you'll like the answer, but I'm looking for any type of asset where there is hidden intrinsic value. Okay. So that could be senior living. It could be self-storage, could be mobile home parks. An example of intri hidden intrinsic value is last year we invested in January, 2020, actually in February, we closed on a 300 lot mobile home park that was run by somebody who had passed away, unfortunately, five years before. And his spouse, his wife lived three or four States away and never visited once. So she owned it. She had a highly paid manager who was motivated just to keep the ship afloat. They weren't doing anything, you know, special to keep, you know, to raise income, to raise value, to even raise rents. They were just trying to keep the ship afloat. So our company with others bought this mobile home park for $7.1 million. We went in and made three or four very straightforward changes to the park and believe it or not, sold it for 15 million by the end of the year in December. And so we took three and a half million dollars in equity and expanded it to over 10 million in equity in one year. Now that's not normal, but the point is the same. And that is 
intrinsic value is finding intrinsic value, having the goggles on to be able to see the value, to acquire it, having the cash and the debt capacity to acquire it, raise the value, and then sell it to a larger institutional player. That formula works over and over. And so that can work in a lot of different asset classes, including multifamily. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the advantages of um, getting into a syndication deal. (laughs) And I know the advantages are many, namely accessibility. Yeah, that's right. So if I wanted to invest in a large scale apartment building, and I wanted to do it myself, not only would I have, let's say uh, 125 units in Lexington, Kentucky, I'm thinking of one that we bought a number of years ago. In summary, I would need three and a half million dollars cash, I'd need debt capacity for $6 million, and I would need liquid net worth of about 10 million total just to get the loan. And so there's so many barriers to entry to get in. But as a syndication participant, I can go put that money with a trusted expert who's been doing this for 10 or 20 or 30 years. They have a team around them. They have systems in place and they have their own skin in the game, which is really important to us so that we know that that operator stand, you know, stands to lose even more than me as an investor if things go south. And so investing in a syndication or diversified syndication, which I would call a real estate fund, mm-hmm. allows me to participate on the same terms as you know, Sam Zell, the world's most, you know, or at least America's most successful real estate investor, I get the same tax write-offs, the same depreciation, all the same through pass through cash flow, but negative income on my K1 on my tax return, all the benefits of investing directly without the toilets, tenants, trash, headache. And all I have to do after vetting the syndicator, all I have to do is walk to the mailbox to get my check every month. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Um, so I, it was kind of interesting. I was looking at your background. Uh, so you were the CMO for uh, Hyatt House, which uh, Hyatt House, Hyatt Place are actually the two brands. I, I think they do a very, yeah. very good job in hospitality. What, what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, to be really clear, I wasn't at Hyatt Corporation. I was at a franchise, you know, oh, okay, but we yeah, were sure. the, the most beautiful, to my knowledge, and from mm. what Hyatt in, in Chicago told us, uh, we were the, the nicest Hyatt House hotel in the U.S. Mm-hmm. as far as, you know, the way it looked, the way it was built, the, the beauty of it. Um, I learned that the hotel business is really, really tough. And there's so many things about it that make it very, very difficult, including the fact that you have to set aside a significant portion of your revenue every year and upgrade the hotel and do a large oh, yeah. renovation every yes. several years, whether it's needed or not. Yep. And so basically what I learned is and nothing against Hyatt. I have nothing but praise for them. And I still stay at Hyatt's every chance I can. But mm-hmm. what I did learn is that the hotel franchisor is probably more profitable than the average franchisee. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I can see that. Um, think about uh, 2020, uh, you know, now, you know, hopefully we're kind of, you know, getting toward the end of, uh, you know, the financial disruption because of shutdowns and so forth. Um, but I'm curious um, if the past year, year and a half has created new opportunities in commercial real estate, or, um, you know, there's some lessons learned from this past year and a half that, that you've taken with you. Richard Cantillion was an Italian economist about 400 years ago, and he came up with uh, some theories, and some of them have been dubbed later the Cantillion effect. The mm-hmm. Cantillion effect says that if you can follow the money, find out where the money was actually created, the, then you will find out who stands to benefit most from economic disruption. And that's way oversimplifying his theory, but that's an application of it. Well, if you can look to see where the money's been printed and how much money's been printed, and I'm talking 30 to 40% of all the currency ever created in US history has been created in the last 15 months, if I'm not mistaken. And 
if you if you look and see who's stand, you know, who stands to benefit from that, there's some very, very wealthy and let's be honest, sometimes very selfish people who tend to benefit from this at the expense of the poor. Well, without hurting the poor, we can actually join them and align ourselves with them. And it's quite simple. Uh, if inflation kicks in the way it seems to be kicking in, and honestly, there's just some math formulas for the amount of currency in the system versus the GDP that say that I don't see any way inflation is avoidable. There's a Wharton or Harvard professor the other day who predicts 20% a year for quite a while. I don't know about that. Oof. Oof. But if you can lock, here's the bottom line on everything I just said, Josh. If you can lock in a fixed, historically low interest rate for 10, 20, 30, 35 years with certain FHA loans on multifamily, if you can lock that in, and that's your biggest cost of running a commercial real estate project, typically, mm -hmm. and then allow revenues to naturally increase with inflation. It is an amazing formula for nominal wealth creation. And I use the word nominal as in, in name only, because if the value of the dollar is declining rapidly, then you might only be keeping up with inflation. But let's face it. If inflation's eight, nine, 10% a year, that's your break even number, guys. So if you want to break even or hopefully do much better than break even, real estate is one way to do that. And I will say this too interest rates, they've studied this, are at the historical lows out of 5,000 years of Earth history. And I don't mean this week, I mean just in general at this period of time in the US. It's a great time to invest in fixed debt assets and take on debt that I would call good debt, debt against good assets, in other words, that are appreciating. Yeah, Paul, who do you who, who typically buys in on a syndication offer for a syndication deal? Like what who, who's like the, the 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 profile of someone that would be a great investor in um, you know, in 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 a plan like in a program like that. Yeah. Yeah, almost every one of the investors I know who invest in real estate syndications fall into two categories, though there are certainly more. Uh, almost every one is either somebody who has tried residential real estate or they've tried commercial and they just realize it's much, much harder than they think. Like the guy I mentioned earlier who, you know, somebody burned down their apartment after a day. Uh, they realize it's much harder than they think, but they're still passionate about real estate. They might have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> and they want in, but they realize they want in passively. One of my investors, after wringing their hands, trying to get deals on the residential side, finally said, why am I working harder than I need to, to make less than I could? And yeah. so she invested in a syndication or two or three. That's one type. The other type is people who are high net worth, doctors, dentists, lawyers, IT professionals, retired people who realize the power of real estate, but they realize they want to stay focused on either their career or their retirement. And they don't want the hassle of doing real estate at all. They haven't even tried it. They just know they don't want to do it. And they're smart enough to find somebody to invest with. Yeah. All right. So your website, Paul, is Wellings Capital dot com. When somebody goes there, um, what should they click on? Or like, how, how, what, what's the next or the first step yeah. after they've been hearing us? They're like, I like this. I, I like what Paul's talking about here. I'm going to go check this out. Where do they go? What do they do? Yeah. I mean, one place they can go is uh, wellingscapital.com slash resources. And the reason that's important is a lot of people want to figure out where the on-ramp is into commercial real estate investing or real estate investing in general. We created a free five-day course there they can get, oh, and cool. they can basically go through these five uh, lessons on how to get involved in commercial real estate investing by doing that, they'll have a primer and they'll be able to go out and figure out, hey, do I want to do this or that or the other? And uh, we also have some other resources there on investing in self-storage, mobile home parks, apartments, et cetera. 
Yeah. Do you have uh, funds open right now, or how how does the that cycle usually work in terms of like open and closed funds? Yeah. Yeah, we just spent 13 months raising $30 million and we closed our uh, most recent fund a few months ago and we're about a month out. So by the time this goes live, we may be ready to launch our fourth uh, real estate fund. That'll be summer of 2021. Excellent. All right. Good deal. So again, wellingscapital.com. And, and where do they get access to the course? It's wellingscapital.com forward yep. slash resources. Resources. All right. Good deal. Yeah. Typing that in right now. All right. Paul Moore, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. You're the uh, co-founder, managing partner, Wellings Capital. Again, wellingscapital.com slash resources. Paul, thank you so much. Thanks, Josh. It was great to be here. A real honor.